Oh, hello. Come right in. Oh, George, we've got company. Well, it's morning in the Burns home, and George has just put away a very substantial breakfast. My goodness, George, what made you eat so much? Oh, just doing what Uncle Sam wants me to do, sweetheart. Uncle Sam? Yeah? The government is asking all workers to eat bigger and better breakfasts so they'll have more energy and do a better job. Plenty of good food is essential for a worker. I see. But what made you eat so much? <laughs> well, uh, all work isn't physical, Gracie. Brain work takes energy, too. Big thinkers usually are big eaters. Why, of course. I remember now. Mother said that about you. Really? Yes, the day I married you, she said, Gracie, I'm warning you, that big thinker will eat you out of house and home. <laughs> well, I'm glad your mother lisps. But, uh, <laughs> but anyway, the government is serious about wanting all workers to eat more nourishing breakfasts and lunches. They want to knock out a thing called hidden hunger. Do you know what hidden hunger is? Oh, sure, sure. I've watched the soldiers at the Hollywood canteen. When they, when they have their choice of eating a sandwich or dancing with Betty Grable, they always hide their hunger. <laughs> no, no, no. That's different. You see, hidden hunger comes from not getting the right kinds of foods. You don't feel hungry, but you get tired very fast, and then you slow down war production. You see, Gracie, our bodies are like stoves. They, they burn food just like a stove burns coal. What, uh, what's funny? Paul White and Callie's around the furnace. <laughs> I see what you were laughing at. I'll go, dear. You stay here and shovel some coal in your stove. <laughs> Good morning, Mrs. Burns. Oh, good morning, Mr. Postman. How are you this morning? Glorious, Mrs. Burns. The corpuscles are just leaping and bounding through my veins. <laughs> oh, my. You certainly are virile. Oh, yes. I gave a pint of my blood to the Red Cross, and it was so strong the cork kept popping out of the bottle. <laughs> Well, that sounds almost too strong. Maybe they should dilute it with some of my husband's blood. <laughs> yes, that would tone it down. Oh, you always feel so wonderful, Mr. Postman. Would you tell me the secret of your health? Nuts, Mrs. Burns. Well, really, Mr. Postman. <laughs> oh, I mean I eat nuts. Oh, you eat them? Oh. Yes. I find that eating nuts gives me many qualities that animals have. Like the squirrel, I'm gay and carefree. <laughs> like the beaver, I'm industrious. Like the skunk, I have bright eyes. Oh, oh. my! What a wonderful discovery. Oh, yes, indeed. Well, here's your mail, Mrs. Burns. A letter for your husband. Thank you. And goodbye, Mr. Postman. Goodbye, Mrs. Burns. Remember, keep smiling. Who was that, dear? Just the postman. Any, any mail for us? Yep. Another request for you to make an appearance. You're so popular, dear. Yeah, I know. These same people have been after you for months. I wrote them to get some other entertainer. Well, uh, where do they want me to appear? In traffic court. <laughs> In traffic court? Yes. Gracie, let me see that letter. Oh, my gosh. This says I'm in contempt of court, and if I don't appear this time, they'll throw me in jail. Oh, let them try it. We'll have the law on them. <laughs> Gracie, they don't want me to entertain. Someone driving my car got a traffic ticket and ignored it. Really? Yeah. Now only two of us drive that car. You and me. And I didn't get the ticket. Well, let's see now. Who's that lead? Gracie, it says here the ticket was issued for parking next to a hydrant in front of Pierre's beauty shop. And I don't go to beauty shop. Well, George, that's very obvious. <laughs> but you do. Oh, thank you, George. You think I'm pretty. <laughs> Gracie, you were parked next to that hydrant. Oh, now you sound just like that policeman. Oh, oh so there was a policeman. Yeah, and he accused me of being next to the hydrant, too. And you weren't? No, I was in the beauty shop. 
Only... <laughs> so the, the car was next to the hydrant. Oh, so that's why the ticket was made out to me. The cop got my name off the steering wheel. Yeah, and I tried to help you, George. I thought if I flirted with him just a little, he might take the ticket back. So I winked at him. What happened? He winked back at me, so I slapped his sassy face. <laughs> oh, no. Look, Hi, look. citizens. Hello, Bill. Hello. Well, what's the matter, George? Oh, Gracie got a parking ticket with my name on it and never told me about it. So I didn't appear in court. Yeah, and now the court thinks he's contemptible. <laughs> oh, no, no, Gracie. You mean that the court... Say, it's possible at that. It's very funny. You make jokes and I'm going to court. What am I going to do? George, I'll tell you. There's only one thing to do. You walk into that court with a bar of swan. The bar of swan? Sure. Come clean. Oh, no. <laughs> come clean, huh? Yes, with the new white floating soap. Remember, you're under oath, so tell them that swan is a great wartime buy because it's actually four soaps in one. The soap for your hands and face, the soap for bathing the baby, for the dishes, and for your light laundry. Four swell soaps in one. Bill, at a time like this, you might really try to help me. Can't you pull some strings down at the courthouse? Well, I might at that, George. The, the traffic judge and I are fraternity brothers. Really, Bill? What fraternity? Only the greatest in the world. Take a cake of swan. <laughs> oh, take a cake of swan. Yeah. <laughs> Thousands of men belong. You see, you're automatically initiated when your wife says, Darling, take a cake of swan and wash the dishes. Mm. She knows that you can't beat swan for washing dishes and for laundering fine things, too. Because Swan not only gives you suds with a capital S, but it's so mild it helps keep your hands soft and lovely. Well, you people are a great help. Do you realize what can happen to me? I can go to jail for life. Oh, my goodness. That's awful. Oh, I hope you don't go, George. But if you do, I hope at least they send you to Alcatraz. <laughs> well, that's very nice talk. Alcatraz, huh? Well, yes. You see, my mother lives in San Francisco. You know that. And it'll be nice knowing she's right across the bay from you. Well, that'll be a nice comfort. Oh, I meant it would be nice for me. If you're going to be away in Alcatraz, I want to know what you're doing with your knife. <laughs> Let's pause for a moment. We'll return to the Burns and Allen Show right after these messages. To find out more about old-time radio, old-time video, and the pleasures of listening to audiobooks, visit the Audiobook Club website, www.audiobookclub.com, where you can get four audiobooks for just one penny. MediaDay.com And now, let's return to George and Gracie, starring in The Burns and Allen Show. Did you keep the traffic ticket, Gracie? I'll need it in court. Oh, yes, I filed it right here in my desk. You see, I keep everything in alphabetical order. Want me to file the ticket for you? Oh, never mind. I'll get it. I suppose you filed it under T for ticket. I guess so. However, I may have filed it under T for traffic. Well, that's the chance I'll have to take, I guess. <laughs> Say, here's a recipe for rhubarb shortcake. What's it doing under T? Oh, well, I tried it out and I didn't like it at all. T for terrible. <laughs> Well, that's nice filing. If you ever want a terrible recipe, you just know where to look. Sure. Hmm. Well, there's no traffic ticket under T. Any other suggestions? Mm, well, it might be under P. P? Uh-huh, for purse. I brought it home in my purse. <laughs> you murder, kid. All right, I'll look under P. Mm, no, come to think of it, it wouldn't be under P. Why not? I wasn't carrying my purse that day. I was carrying my pocketbook. <laughs> Well, that would still put it under P. No, no, it's an alligator pocketbook. Oh, under A, huh? Uh, no, no, I'm wrong. It would still be under P. Why? Pot cowhide. Oh, pot cowhide. <laughs> That's a great filing system. Well, there's no ticket here. Are you sure you kept it? Oh, I'm positive. Try looking under B. Why B? The policeman who gave it to me had blue eyes. Oh, B for blue. Yes. Yes, yes, okay. How about this? There's another copy of that same recipe for rhubarb shortcake. Oh, yes. Well, I tried it again, and the second time it tasted much better. B, B for, for better. better. Yes. yes. <laughs> well, I'll be done. What's our marriage license doing in here? Well, I filed it under B for bargain. Oh. <laughs> uh, 
be for bargain? Yeah, well, you've been a wonderful husband. I I've never gotten more value out of anything I paid two dollars for. <laughs> Thanks, kid. No fooling. Did you file that ticket? Well, of course I did. Oh, I remember now. Here it is, George, under W. He gave me the ticket on Tuesday. <laughs> well, uh, I don't get it. Well, I didn't file it until Wednesday. <laughs> well, let me see the ticket. Oh, my gosh, this is almost three months old. The judge will throw the book at me. What book? It's just an expression. I don't think I've read that one. <laughs> Gracie, try to understand. I'm really in serious trouble. I might be put in jail, and it's all your fault. Oh, really? Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I didn't realize how serious it is. Oh, sure. <laughs> oh, hello, baby. I'm sorry, Herman, but Mama doesn't feel like playing with you today. <laughs> well, Mama's very sad because something terrible has happened. Well, you, you see, dear, your daddy might go to jail. <laughs> daddy George might go to jail. Stop it, stop it, stop it. Stop it before I beat the stuffing into you. Right. <laughs> Herman, shame on you. Why don't you do something to cheer up your daddy? <laughs> Herman, Herman, stop at this instant. Now apologize to your daddy. Herman Burns, apologize. Yeah, apologize. <coughs> Someday I'm going to walk that kid over to a pillow factory. Uh, I've had enough of this. I'm going down to the courthouse and try to straighten this mess out. Oh, Herman, you ought to be ashamed of yourself. Your daddy's in real trouble and it's all my fault. Yes, really. And I'm going right out and get him the best lawyer in town. Believe me, Herman, your daddy George won't go to jail. Uh, uh, pardon me, are you Frederick H. Beck, the attorney? Yes. I'm Mrs. George Burns, and I may want to hire you. Well, sit right down, Mrs. Burns. Uh, I'll be with you as soon as I finish these briefs. Oh, do you make your own short? <laughs> no, uh, I was using the term in its legal sense. Oh, I see. Well, Mr. Beck, are you a good lawyer? Well, most people think I'm an excellent lawyer. Well, I'm not interested in what most people think. If I were, I probably wouldn't be married today. <laughs> well, uh, nevertheless, Mrs. Burns, I flatter myself that I am highly competent. Well, I'll just have to make sure. Do you mind if I ask you a few questions? Oh, not at all. Good. Now, um, what sort of law work do you specialize in? I mean, are you a criminal lawyer, a corporation lawyer, or a plain shyster? <laughs> shyster? Well, that answers that question. <laughs> Now, um, are you a high school graduate, Mr. Beck? Oh, my dear madam, I am a graduate of Yale, Princeton, and Harvard. Oh, three high schools. <laughs> Mrs. Burns. Well, I guess your education's all right. Now, uh, do you know how to draw up a writ of rigor mortis? Rigor mortis? <laughs> well, yes, it's one of those Italian, oh, not Italian, Latin phrases that lawyers are always using, you know, like la cucaracha. <laughs> La Cucaracha, my dear Mrs. Burns, happens to be Spanish. Well, the Spanish, my dear Mr. Beck, happens to be Latin. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, my time is valuable. Do you wish to engage me as a counsel? Well, I do need a lawyer awfully badly. You see, my husband is in trouble. Oh? Well, yes. Now, if it was me, I'd just cross my legs in the witness chair and get acquitted. <laughs> but, uh, if my husband does that, they might give him life. <laughs> Well, uh, what did your husband do? Well, it really wasn't his fault. You see, he's shielding a woman, a very beautiful woman. Oh. And what did this woman do, commit a murder? Mm, no. Blackmail? No. Well, what did this woman do? You mean the beautiful woman? Yes, yes. I parked next to a hydrant. <laughs> Mrs. Burns, I can't waste my time on such an unimportant matter. Good day. Well, very well, Mr. Beck. 
But you haven't heard the last of this. I'll go to the California Medical Association about it. The Medical Association? I'm a lawyer. That's right. And I'll see that not another ambulance ever goes down this street. Goodbye. <laughs> well, Gracie has interviewed several lawyers, but with no success. And now, as she emerges from the last office, she runs across an old friend. None other than that great Shakespearean actor and pool room bum, <laughs> Nigel Bolingbroke. Why, Mr. Bolingbroke. Oh, my dear Mrs. Burns, this is charming. Oh, isn't it? Well, I, I see you've been consulting a solicitor, my dear. Uh, divorcing your husband? <laughs> oh, no, nothing as trivial as that. <laughs> uh, my, um, my husband is in terrible trouble. He may go to jail. No. Oh, dear, the, the sight of your woebegone face robs me of all the pleasure I would otherwise derive from such news. Oh, it's awful, and I've been looking all over town for a lawyer. Ah, uh, that reminds me of what was perhaps the greatest role of my brilliant histrionic career. I portrayed a silver-tongued barrister in that stirring courtroom drama, The Trial of Myron Fudnick. <laughs> I'll bet you were great. Well, let's not say great. Let's just say I was magnificent. <laughs> <laughs> Why, the audience rose in their seats to cheer me during all three nights that the play ran. Oh, it must have been thrilling. Oh, I'll never forget that courtroom scene. The man on trial for his crime, his daughter, brave, tragic figure, pleading for him. Oh, how pitiful. And then suddenly, my voice rang out in that hushed courtroom. I am the voice of justice. <laughs> to err is human, but to forgive is divine. This man made a mistake, yes. He did steal a few hundred thousand dollars from a bank, <laughs> but only because his family needed bread. <laughs> but in the sacred name of humanity, should he be sent to prison for that? Oh, no, not guilty, not guilty. <laughs> Exactly what the jury said. The prisoner was freed, and I took 30 vows. Oh, how wonderful. If you were defending my husband, I wouldn't... Say, why couldn't we do that thing for the judge? I'll be the daughter, and you be the voice of justice. Splendid. I can teach you the daughter's lines on the way to the courtroom. Oh, thank you. Oh, not at all, Mrs. Burns. Why, I'd be glad to do it, even if you weren't going to pay me. <laughs> Oh, am I going to pay you? Well, the actor's guild insists on a small fee. <laughs> Not too small, of course. <laughs> well, um, shall we say uh, five dollars? Five dollars? For your husband's freedom. My, my dear Mrs. Burns, think what it means to hold him in your arms. All right, five fifty. <laughs> Gee, Bill, it was nice of you to come down to the court with me. Oh, I'm, I'm glad to do it, George. If there's any chance of them putting you in jail, I want to help. <laughs> uh, how did you mean that? Well, I, I mean I'll be your character witness. Just wait till that judge hears what I have to say. Now, Bill, don't start telling the judge about swan soap. George, I give you my word, I won't mention swan soap unless the judge himself brings it up. Hello. Well, Mr. Burns, his honor will see you in his private chamber. Oh, thanks. Come on, Bill. Oh, good afternoon, your, your honor. I'm, I'm George Burns. Oh, yes. You're the man who ignored my summons. Your honor, this man is innocent. Who are you, an attorney? Well, sort of, yes. Sort of. Young man, have you passed the bar? Well, gee, no, I haven't, but... I'll pass it right now. Here, Judge, have a bar of swan. Oh, Bill! <laughs> George, he asked for it. He probably knows that swan, the new white floating soap, is four swell soaps in one. It's a soap for dishes, for light laundry, a baby soap, and a toilet soap. I tell you what, Judge. Rustle up a pan of water, and I'll show you some real suds. Mild suds. Good man. I could give you 30 days for that. Oh, I wouldn't need 30 days. I could show you in one minute. Oh. What a soap. Why, Swan is purer than finest Castiles. Great for suds, too. And Swan's extra mildness is just what the doctor ordered for baby's bath. And because it is so mild, Swan's not only a great baby soap, it's great for anybody's complexion. And remember, you can break Swan in two. Bailiff, uh, remove this man. Uh, but, Judge, Your Honor, 
Uh, Mr. Goodwin is, is Mr. Goodwin is here as my character witness, and I'd like you to hear what he has to say. Oh, well, all right, Mr. Goodwin. Let's hear what you have to say. But make it quick. Yes, sir. I'd like to say the swan breaks in two with an easy twist of oh, wrist, oh. so you can use one half for dishes and light laundry, and the other half for your tub or shower for bathing the baby. And that's the soap, the whole soap, and nothing but the soap. So help me. <laughs> well, now that the bubbling barrister is gone, perhaps we can straighten this out. Now, just why did you ignore that traffic ticket and my summons? Well, Judge, I'll explain it to you. Hmm. Are you married? Yes, but we're discussing your trouble, not mine. Oh. <laughs> well, you see, my wife's got a filing system, and she filed this traffic ticket under W because she got it on Tuesday from a policeman with blue eyes and... Oh, send me to jail. Hey! <laughs> Oh, come, Mr. Burns. <laughs> There's no question of going to jail. There isn't? Oh, of course not. You're not a criminal. You're just a bit of an imbecile. <laughs> <laughs> Gee, thanks, Your Honor. I place your fine at $20. Well, it's a pleasure. I'll make out the check right away. Stop the trial! Stop the trial! Yes, halt the proceeding. <laughs> uh, Gracie, what's this? I'll save your father. Father? <laughs> Mr. Burns, who are these peculiar people? I'm his daughter, Your Honor. And I am the voice of justice. <laughs> Gracie, what's going on? I'll save your father. Father? Your Honor, Your Honor, don't think of my father as he is today. A miserable, broken-down wreck. Huh? Think of him. Think of him as he was 30 years ago. A well-preserved man of middle age. Oh. Listen. Listen to the voice of justice. I am the voice of justice. Oh, your Honor. Your Honor, be fair. Prove that beneath that long black robe you are not indecent. But Gracie... I'll save your father. Father? Your Honor, don't send him to the jute mill. Don't, don't make him spend his last feeble years making little jutes out of big jutes. Huh? Listen, listen to the voice of justice. I am the voice of justice. Your Honor, my father wasn't always a criminal. When I was a little tot, he was gentle, kind. Then he carelessly committed a murder. A murder? Oh, I'll save you, Father. Father, what? Listen to the voice of justice. I am Stop the voice of justice. Stop this. But, George, that's only the first act of the play. We have three more acts before you. I thought so. Your Honor, this isn't my daughter. It's my wife. Now, could you just take this check for $20 and let me get out of here? Wait a minute. You, you say that woman is your wife? Yes. Keep the 20. You've got enough trouble. Come on. Well, have you ever stopped to think how much money you spend for soap? I'll bet much more than you have to, because there's no need to buy easily wasted package soaps for your dishes, strong bar soaps for your light laundry, expensive toilet soaps for yourself, or even high-priced cast steel soaps for your baby. No, sir, one soap, Swan, will do all those jobs, because Swan is four soaps in one. And what a soap, a suds and whiz that's purer than finest cast steel. So buy Swan, a great buy any time, a greater buy than ever in wartime. The makers of Swan, the new white floating soap, join George and Gracie in inviting you to tune in next week, same time. Good night. <laughs>